Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantine system. So we have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 3 and x plus y plus z is equal to 3 and we're looking for integer solutions. Okay, now in order to be able to solve this system, and why is this called a Diophantine system? Because first of all we're looking for integer solutions and second we only have two equations with three unknowns. Okay, so with real numbers obviously there's going to be infinitely many situations, right? So, how do we go about solving the system? Well, we're going to be using some identities, obviously, and the first thing that I want to use is if I cube x plus y plus z, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So, I'll be getting something real long, right? But I'd like to do it in a smart way. So, what I'd like to do is uh, maybe just treat this as a quantity and then just cube it like a plus b quantity cubed, right? And if I do that, and even then I can use some shortcuts, you'll probably remember those. So let me go ahead and write it down so you'll see what it looks like. So I'll just write it like this, x plus y quantity cubed plus three times the x plus y squared times z plus three times x plus y multiplied by z squared. And finally, we have z cubed. I mean, obviously, this just gives you this expression, right? Because if you were cubing a plus b, a plus b, then you would be writing a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So it's pretty much the same thing. But we want to write it in a smarter way. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. And then I want to keep the terms in the middle as is. And then z cubed I want to bring over. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, I'll write it this way. x cubed plus y cubed. And then the two terms in the middle, I'm just going to write it like 3xy times the quantity x plus y, right? And then plus 3x plus y squared z plus 3x plus y z squared. And what I'd like to do is obviously I'd like to take this and move a little forward so that I have room for other things, right? Let me bring it over here, okay? And then... Finally, I should be having the z cubed, right? But I like to bring that z cubed anyways at the end. Um, I want to bring it to the front. Okay, cool. Now, what I'd like to do is put these together like x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, right? And then these three terms, obviously, they have a common factor. So what I can pretty much do is just, you know, factor them out. But uh, how can I do that? Well, looks like they all have uh, three times the quantity x plus y in them. So why don't we just go ahead and write it like this? Three times the quantity x plus y. And then the rest of it is going to look like this. We're going to have xy plus uh, z times x plus y from here. And then from here, we're going to be getting just a z squared, right? Okay, that should be just a z squared because we took out the three times the quantity x plus y. Cool. So that's our expression now. Uh, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit more to see what that looks like. And at the end, I'm going to give you the identity. Okay. I just didn't want to give it to you. I wanted to show you where that comes from. So hopefully this is going to be more interesting. And then this expression now here, notice that you can write it as xy plus xz plus yz plus z squared. And obviously here, uh, we can just go ahead and group it and factor like that. So we can say, hey, this can be written as x times y plus z and then uh, z times y plus z, which brings us to another expression, uh, x plus z times y plus z. So at the end, this is what we're going to be getting. Let me just uh, give you the final answer here. So the x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed can be written as, actually, I shouldn't be writing it that way. So I wanted to start off with the x plus y plus z cubed, right? And then this can be written as x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, right? We have those. Plus, then we'll be getting from here three times the quantity, x plus y times x plus z times y plus z. Now, this is important because we're going to be using this in our problem. Okay, great. Now, what we know is that uh, x plus y plus z is equal to 3. So this is going to be 27. And we also know that uh, the sum of the cubes is also 3. So that gives us something nice. And this is what we we're trying to get, actually. I want to get the uh, kind of like a two-way product, something like this. And if I can subtract 3 and divide by 3, I should be getting something like this. x plus y multiplied by x plus z multiplied by 
y plus z is equal to 24 divided by 3, which is equal to 8. Great. So that's what I wanted to get. So we do get another expression that we'll be using, but how do I use that to solve my system? Okay, great. Now, obviously, this can be replaced with something nicer, and let's see how that works. This is really cool. So since we know that x plus y plus z is equal to 3, this, this actually allows you to write x plus y in a different form, which is uh, 3 minus z. So for example, in this case, you can replace x plus y with 3 minus z, and then x plus z with 3 minus y, and this one with 3 minus x. So that gives us something nicer. Let's go ahead and do that. 3 minus z, 3 minus y, and 3 minus x. Now you might be asking why um, am I doing this, right? Uh, well, there's a reason behind it, because what I'd like to do is, I want to narrow this down to which integers will satisfy this type of system, right? So I need to be able to get something in the factored form. And this is factored form. And the reason why I convert it to this one is because each factor contains a single variable. That's what's cool about it. So I can think about, okay, what are factors of eight? Well, one, you can write it as one times two times four, or you can write it as two times two times two, or you can write it as one times one times eight. So there are, you know, different ways to write it. Obviously, not there are not the only ways because we could also consider that, hey, you can use the negative two, negative two, and then positive two. So the absolute values also work here. But this is not it. We have something else. And that's coming up. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so the other expression that I'm going to use is, okay, so I know that their product, there are three expressions here, three quantities, their product is eight. Can I get their sum? Absolutely. Why? Because you'll see in a little bit, this is so much fun. Let's go ahead and add these quantities up and see what happens. Well, we do know that this is equal to nine minus the quantity x plus y plus z. And we know that x plus y plus z is equal to three. So nine minus three is equal to six. Awesome. This is what I was trying to get. Okay, beautiful. Now, I do have three quantities and they each contain a single variable. I know the product of these quantities and I know the sum of these quantities. So I have more information, which means that I can kind of narrow this down. All right, cool. How do we do that? Let's see. Well, when you think about it, when I said, okay, negative two, negative two, and positive two, let's think about it, right? What if each of these quantities is like negative two, negative two, and positive two? Well, you're gonna notice that their sum does not equal six because if you add these three quantities, if you add these three quantities, you're gonna notice that the sum is not equal to six. So we need to find a pair whose product is eight and whose sum is six. And they're, they're very limited. So for example, one of them is gonna be two, two, two. So notice that two times two times two is equal to eight and two plus two plus two is equal to six. Beautiful. And then can I find another pair? Absolutely. How about using eight with ones? But if you use eight one one, their sum is gonna be 10. So you're gonna be tricky here. Uh, how about using eight with two negative ones. And that's going to give you positive eight. When you add them, you're going to be getting positive six as well. Great. So we basically got what we needed. And that's pretty much what we have. We don't really have anything else besides these. You can test it out. Unfortunately, there are no more solutions. Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and solve each one of these and see what happens. Well, since these are my three minus x, three minus y, and three minus z values, I basically get something like this from here. Well, three minus x equals two, three minus y equals two, and three minus z equals two. This gives me one, 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 right? Obviously, I get one, one, one from here. What if they are equal to eight, negative one, and negative one? Let's go ahead and take check that out. What if three minus x is equal to eight, and then three minus y is equal to negative one, and then three minus z is also equal to negative one? And this is gonna give you another order triple, which is negative five comma, four comma four. Obviously, x, y, z can switch around. So we have all the permutations of the second ordered triple. So let's go ahead and write our solution set and finalize this problem. So our solution set is going to look like this then. We have one, 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 which is awesome, right? Three ones. And then the other solutions are going to look like the following. So we have negative five, four, four. And obviously, you can permute to negative five and there's only three factorial divided by two factorial ways to permute it. So you can just write it like four, negative five, and four. And then finally, we can write four, four, and negative five. And these represent the x, y, and z values. All right, cool. Now, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.